Welcome back, everyone, to TNO, the last news of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokolover, and we're using the submod, the new order, Sony Plus, but 1931, down the mountains. Snaking along the coast, all the way from Shaozhou to Shenzhen, the road sprawled. Spilling and splitting, roadmen met Lamb's gaze as his uncle's car passed by, kicking dust into their eyes and impassive faces. A cement mixer lay aside the reeds, their visage the silhouettes of the men. Heads helmeted and wrapped in bandanas seemed to sear Lamb's soul. They dug the earth and leveled it out. Reinforcing the shallows with concrete, piling dirt into embankments where the terrain was low in the driver's seat. Lamb's uncle held a cigarette in his hand as he adjusted the steering wheel. The ramshackle car would jutter and sputter at points, prompting them to stop. At these junctures, his mother would look sadly into the wilderness, her eyes drifting to the shrinking mountains to the east. Home was now farther and farther away. Lamb missed the rush of the Han River. The road was quiet, save for the buzzing of late summer cicadas. As they got closer to Shenzhen, the left side of the road tapered into beaches, white sands beyond which was a blue-green sea. In the distance, steam whistles bit into the air with an audible screech when they arrived. They decided to eat chicken rice at the bustling market as that lamb ate his food. Careful not to cross his chopsticks, his uncle began to excitedly explain the history of the Shenzhen market. Capital, Chen Jitang. Modernizations, importers across the sea. China for the Chinese, mother and child sat listening, smiling politely at every remark. When the waiter returned with the tea, all Lamb could remember was the steam arising from the brown liquid alongside a faintly sweet smell, a lone beacon in a long tunnel of darkness, and the Industrial Organization Ordinance passes, with Matsushita support. The Industrial Organization Ordinance passed today after a protracted debate in the Legislative Council. Discussions were especially vigorous regarding provisions in that favored the Zushin members of the entrepreneurial class of Guangdong. Ibogamasaru and Koma Konachiro argued that only those possessed of capital and having evident talent should be permitted to benefit from the government assistance. Observers, however, noted two problems with this argument. First, it was quite terribly hypocritical coming from Ibuka and Koma, of all people. Secondly, anyone that knew them, that even somewhat well, knew that they meant only Japanese people should have government assistance. Marita Kale's counter-argument that the Kanugu would benefit more from competition, which would benefit everyone as Guangdong needed it in order to avoid stagnation, was successfully backed by Morita and Li Kaxing's combined delegates. Amidst the applause and desk slapping of the Sony and Chong Kong delegates joined even by some of the Matsushita members, Li himself was held up as a success story. His experience, Morita said, was proof positive that anyone could have the right idea to contribute to Guangdong prosperity if they wanted it, and that there should be no obstacles preventing them from trying. In a last such effort to uh, scuttle the bill, Ibuka made a direct appeal to Masashida Masaharu for his support. However, Masashida remained silent with that rebuff. The industrial organization ordinance was at last vote into law amidst the cheers of the Sony and Chong Kong delegates, the polite applause from the Masashida faction, and the important anger at the Fujitsu and Hitachi factions. A job well done. So, basically, like I said, we did have to get uh, Masashida uh, his support. We favored Masashida. So, basically, instead of a 1% growth, we get 0.85% growth. Which isn't bad, still. Uh, we basically only get 0.05% Chinese government support, which is almost nothing. But it's better than losing support, so we get a tiny bit of that. Um, tiny bit more Chinese government support. But we get a lot of Zhujian support, and industrial expertise and equipment will improve. And economy will become more centralized, which I'm okay with. That's a fair trade-off for what we really want here in the end. In the meantime, I guess we also do the product cycle. Um, and, yeah. 20% corruption is not bad. O approval, I mean, it's still pretty high over here. We could use more people's Republic, of, people's Republic of China. Just the Republic of China's. And we're still focusing on this tile, tile Momai, for support. So, uh, we're still doing capitalism with a human face. So, if you want to read that one again, please go right ahead. And then the Malaises of today, which I think I read earlier today. Oh, the Christmas offensive, huh? Uh, the social ills afflicting Guangdong's populace are impossible to ignore. Widespread poverty, rampant workplace deaths, suicide nets, all amidst a haze of industrial smog and smoke that increasingly poison the air we breathe. The most visible sign of our commitment to make Guangdong something more than a factory line with the disposable people. To make good on our promise to do better, we must take action on the malaises of today. Which gives us more, uh, you know, support. So the dignity and work and health and life are the two most important and pressing concerns that we can take action to address right now as, uh, we're going to make battleships, apparently, as <laughs> uh, Guangdong, you know. But not really. Uh, we're here to improve our industry and whatnot as much as possible. We have six of these working on that, which is fine with me. Uh, honestly, do we really need another military factory here? Not really, no. So we're going to give it to the cities. Which would be nice. Anything else that we really care about? Oh! Several uh, co members are likely receiving team money to push different corporate agendas who will continue to work or corrupt our legislature if they are not stopped. We must investigate members who might have these connections and reprimand them. Decrease corruption more and more Zushin support? Fantastic. 11% corruption, not bad. 0.9% growth for corruption, but we get 0.15 political power, way more Chinese government support, and real growth, actually, so fantastic, because we're only at 12% growth. We don't really get surplus, don't really have a deficit, but an intolerable commute. 
Often had Marita Keo had made the four-hour train ride from Hong Kong to Koshu, watching the Kowloon station clock tower pull away before burying himself in a product report. Too often he thought, and now the reports were replaced with government documents for review, helped only by Li Kuxing sharing the burden. Luckily, the two finished early today, and the train slumbered over the Sham Chun River, leaving the mountains of Hong Kong's hinterland for the flatlands of the Pearl River Delta. We looked out over an elect unelectrified shantytown, where children in rags jumped into a kaleidoscopic river slick with chemical runoff, not a kilometer away from the offending factory. More eerie uh, were the abandoned villages amidst the overgrown fields. With rusting plague runs, dilapidated shrines, and lifeless concrete, nature would soon reclaim these spaces, empty to defeat the hunger. Uh, of the three pearls. Uh, in between the lonesome hamlets were occasional IJA or police of Bahuina flags flying above isolated garrisons surrounded by barbed wire and sentry towers. A petitioner pleaded for a sentry. His way barred by an armored car and bayonet, the train mercifully sped onwards before what came next. As the train entered Koshu, the elevator rock or trap concealed the beggars anywhere below, instead of showing the layered nuts jutting out from the recurring factories and offices, lit only by the headlights of the recovery crews. They achieved accidents in a harrowing dance with only a flimsy harness to prevent them from becoming accidents in turn. It was an intolerable conflict for them both. A dismal landscape made bleaker by powerlessness in years past, but now something must be done. At least with the Kanpai Tai, you get a lot of support for everybody, whether they like it or not. Uh, the health crisis. The deplorable working and living conditions in Guangdong slums and factories have given rise to the two grave maladies of life in Guangdong, respiratory illness and despair. What society can be said to be a good one, while its people choke on smog thicker than water, walking underneath a tice of suicide nets, so normal that the shade cast by a decaying body is treated the same as a passing cloud? Where Matsushita or Ibuka might assert that caring for the health of the public is a costly exercise in preserving human resources, we would beg to differ. It is an ethical obligation, a cornerstone of a renewed contract between labor and capital. We share the same fate. Why should employees suffer unduly the consequences of management's, management's excesses? Oh, cool. We're going to this one. Please go ahead. Yay! So this one, we have 51 seats, which is fantastic. It'll probably begin to improve, increase Chinese government support as well, which is fantastic. Global range operations? Yeah, totally. Ah, good, good. So we're slowly coming up here. We can lower the triad support. That'd be great. Of course, we're the lowest with the police support here, but it, it's for the future. It's always for the future. Uh, Japanese dominant civil servants is currently very prone to inefficiencies and corruption. Chief Executive Morita and Chief Secretary Lee have proposed minor reforms to the service, of course, so that the system can be less corrupt and inefficient, which will also increase the people's trust in us. Less expat support, but whatever. So right now we need to have 24.7 billion in a GDP. It's February, so any second now we'll have that. And then right now we have 25.8 billion. Nice. Our annual budget is negative 30, 30 billion. Huh. So lower this by 4.5%. Yeah, we have it. At 1965 Economic Review, Chief Executive Morita Kale leaned back in his chair, smiling faintly as the Consul General Takashima Masuo took a seat opposite him, holding the 1965 copy of Guangdong's economic idea, or data. They both knew the th tome's contents in advance, and Takashima only made a cursory show of idly turning its pages before setting it aside. Guangdong has made all its economic targets for last year. Takashima said, a wry smile tucking on his lips. Industrial output, factory investment, export revenues, all indicators show an economy performing at its best. Tokyo is very pleased. Uh, Chief Executive Morito, uh, Akeo, nodded, letting the Consul General's praise settle comfortably within him. Of course, Guangdong had met the expectations set up by its stakeholders. Between its policies and the efforts of the companies, Guangdong had proven itself that it could, it could perform economic alchemy, and do so for however long it was required. The two men talked for another 15 minutes, the two largely exchanging compliments and conversing in generalities about the coming year's economic initiatives. The meeting was, of course, to end early, as the con conversation petered out, with Takashima fiddling with his glasses, waiting to be ex excused. Get back to work. So, the next year, our stakeholders or shareholders, expect a real growth of 7%, or GDP of 27.607 billion USD. Increases uh, Japanese expat government support by 2%, great. Zuzhin support goes up more, increases Japan's approval, approval by 5%, and get three more seats. Our support's only 85%, which is not bad. Gets more growth, more monthly government support, costs more money though, and Yakuza influence does go up as well, which does kind of suck, but it is what it is. Health crisis. So now we have 53 seats. That would've helped earlier in the last episode, but whatever. Product cycle we'll have in about three months. And after that, the air we breathe. Ooh. The labor ordinance is underway. Labor ordinance is underway. Voting on the labor ordinance. Okay, right, so can we only choose one of them? Or can we choose, can we choose both? So you do this, and then you can choose two of that, maybe. The labor... Labor Standards Ordinance Vote on Public Ordinance Vote. Huh. Well, we'll see what happens. 46 seats, that's not good enough. 
pretty good with corruption. Oh, by integrating the triads into part of our security strategy, we no longer gain corruption from the triad-controlled states. Oh, that'd be good. Well, the triads have a well-deserved reputation for criminality and brutality. Marita and Leah pin their hopes on bringing the underworld of Guangdong to heal via their long-time acquaintance, Stanley Ho, the Macanese smuggler, industrious, and fixer with ties of his own to the triads. While Stanley was a, well, woos the hearts and courts and checkbooks of Guangdong's Japanese leader in Macau, he squares up against his rival, the Japanese vulture capitalist Yoko, Yokoi Hideki, in a war of the shadows in Guangdong. Beneath the watch of the Guangdong police, Stanley and Yokoi fight a merciless battle where lives are cheap, money is king, and everything is at stake. If it helps Stanley win and go legitimate, we could have a powerful ally maintaining control over Guangdong. Stanley just has such a proposal, an exclusive contract for gambling rights within his home territory of Macau, to make it a shining light of tourism to the sphere. But the Yakuza will surely not go so quietly. Why would they? Undercurrent, says Morita Mar Mar Akeo. Uh, sat in his office, listening to the reports of his factional whip, he felt trepidation rise from somewhere deep within him. The grinning wretch, Komai, had been busy with Hitachi's money, it seemed. The whip was reporting many late-night meetings and brown paper bag changing hands, with Hitachi representatives entering the offices of high-ranking Kenpai Tai officers, and not coming out for hours, according to the whip. This has been going on for weeks now with no sign of abating. The results, as far as I could tell, was consistent solely of an uptick in the legislative council seats. And an emerging pro-Hitachi sediment among the military, Hitachi was getting favorable amendments, tacked onto routine ordinances, but seemingly nothing more. Uh, along after the whip had left his office, Marita Kale, I found himself wondering what all that meant. Hitachi was putting some serious money into this, whatever it was, and Komai was clearly bringing all the, uns all the unsavory talents to bear, but why? Were they going to propose an ordinance? To make a bid for IJA contracts? Surely whatever they were planning could not possibly justify the lengths that they were going into in order to make it happen. The rats come up from under the floorboards. Oh... Not ideal. Okay, Tashi power will grow through acquiring votes and expanding that power by expanding Manchurian and Nissan funds as well as splurging on the Kenpai Tai. We should monitor their movements to ensure that they do not entrench themselves in the Leg Co. Oh, we lost it. Well, that's really not good. For now, I do want more approval though. Product cycle, two and a half months. Civil war in Indonesia. Fantastic. Time for more T PTRG stuff. First time in this episode. Very good. Or this campaign for with us, even though I did one technically off screen already. Oh, God dang it, can't buy tie. Wait for nothing. Mar Marita Akeo liked to think of himself as a patient man, or at least a reasonable one. Who didn't? A few men out there uh, were pleased in thinking of themselves as rude or arrogant, and indeed it was a good idea in the world of politics to lend a little leeway to those partners of yours. It was especially a good idea when negotiating over a plan as tense and delicate as the one he proposed. A joint training exercise between the RGOC and the Guangdong police had never been attempted before. Uh, and it showed in a way that smugglers and criminals snuck across the border both ways with a wild abandon. Both Nanjing and Guangdong were skeptical of the benefits, of course, and were they ever not. So he had to tread carefully, making it seem we're not doing him no favors. However, he couldn't help but feel some irritation at the fact that he had been mindlessly tapping his foot against the linoleum floor of the consulate's lobby for the last 30 minutes, or that this was not the first time he'd been put in such a spot. Which part of that got more of his nerves wasn't clear. The consul general's door swung open with a flourish without even thinking the chief executive was on his feet. He took one step forward and his heart in his throat, and then paused, and felt his heart drop back through his chest and through the stomach. Standing in the door was not the composed diplomat of the Consul General himself, but instead the sturdy figure of the attaché, arms free of notes and mouths drawn tightly. Good afternoon, I regret to inform you that the meeting has been cancelled. Nanjing has scrapped the deal. The Consul General wishes to inform you that he regrets that you were kept waiting for this. Wait a second, Morito Keo began, but his words were ignored as resoundingly as ever. His partner turned around with a moment's pause, closing the door between them with a thud. He didn't even sit down. Superior approval. Consul General, I know you need to know why your government is delaying our exposition. The chief executive didn't bother sitting down, putting his briefcase down beside him with a thud that startled Takashima and out of his smoky haze. That's a critical matter for us. We can't afford to miss our deadline. The way the market works, I need it, my answer, and I need it now. My apologies, Chief Executive, but I, Takashima Samurai, practically chewing on a cigarette, but a wave of Marit uh, Akeo's hand cut him off. I don't need apologies, Consul General. I need that exposition. This is some meddling idiocy from Tokyo. Well, let me speak, would you? Now, Takashima was the one cutting Morita Keo off, even if his voice seemed much less passionate and much more exhausted than his counterparts. Yes, it's meddling from home. Zaibatsu's, you see, they're worried about these expos. The thing is free marketing for companies at this point. The Prime Minister agrees with them, too. What am I supposed to do about that? We hold these expos for advertising in the first place. The thing is rather simple, to be frank. Smoke billow from Takashima's mouth as he spoke in monotone, fogging up his glasses and wrinkling Mor Morita Keo's nose. Toki says let them um, uh, share the stage with the corporations. To be quite honest with you, Chief Executive, they're not wrong that you're side landing them, even if they're being petty about it. It's only fair to cut them in. I took it, which is how ridiculous. We lose a seat for uh, for more for some approval. Fine. The challengers, as Damocles, uh, I've read this uh, many times before. Oh, okay. So each year, rival factions of the Guangdong Legislative Council buy up seats to say a float against the current chief executive. Crap. Uh, if you don't know about this, please go ahead. God dang it. Land of Canover. Wait, what is that? 
Can it transfer the sovereignty of these islands back to the UK? For the pre-war British government, can it transfer the sovereignty of these islands back to the UK? What? What's going on here? Michael Foot. Dem Democratic Socialists? Huh. I don't think I've seen this before. A socialist romance. 20 years in the making. Economic health dire, of course. They freaking did it. Wow. The miseries of Guangdong. A bureaucrat was making a grim presentation to Li Keqing on the health situation in Guangdong. All the technical benefits and advancement, advanced goods that are designed and exported from Guangdong come at a terrible human cost. They turn the Pearl River Delta into a true valley of tears of the shadow of death. Few things illustrate this more than the high rate of worker suicides in the city. And we saw 50 votes. That's right, 50 votes. Many workers, uh, despairing of life, spend toiling under ruthless corporations, throw themselves from the roofs of any suitably high building they find, the government. Rather than finding improving working conditions, uh, came up with another solution. They provided companies with suicide nets that situated at a given level managed to counteract uh, the force of gravity on a would-be suicide and save him from, or her from the death that she or he so eagerly desires. But this did essentially nothing to improve the situation, and so many bodies are retrieved each day that the people of the region have become numb to the prospect. Another problem in the city is the terrible uncleanliness everywhere in the city. The sky is polluted enough to prompt air quality warnings and states of emergency anywhere else in the world, as one might expect countless people enter hospitals in the region every day with one or another type of respiratory illness. Finally, one who visits Guangdong will notice the brisk sail in Japanese will filtered water. This is because virtually any water naturally present in the area, be that tap or river water, is too polluted to use due to the omnipresent factories having free reign to release their byproducts into the Pearl River Delta. If these ills or social ills were eliminated, or at least, at least allevi alleviated, Guangdong would become a far better place. But you, Mr. Lee, of all people, know that that is much easier said than done. Be that as it may, I will see it done. Environmental protection, huh? What is this? The smokestacks quit smoking. Approve those air pollution standards on the companies. Reduces seats. Air quality regulations. Purity water control. Reduces Matsushita seats. Increases Chung Kong to initial support for the ordinance. Reduces Matsushita's and continue to add Chung Kong seats. Reach out and listen. Open suicide net for suicide support hotlines to save people on the brink, increasing Chinese support. Reduces Matsushita and Fujitsu. Hmm. Interesting. Guangdong sits on a wealth of natural resources, which have been haphazardly and hazardly developed in the past, at a great cost to local residents, which will be different. Oh, what's this one? New Lion or Rock. My management philosophy is to provide happiness to all people who are interested in Sony. Among them, the happiness of employees is my biggest concern. They must be happy because they are the ones who have entrusted the most precious time of their lives to Sony. My biggest mission is my staff to make them think I was really happy at working at Sony when they passed away. Well, we'll see. The bodies we see, it's impossible to ignore the nets strung above the Pearl River to catch those who would prefer the release of death over the pain of life. Every life lost from the despair in Guangdong is one bright light for the future snuffed out all well before its prime, and the numbers only continue to increase. Will those remain sink deeper in the misery as the retrieval of crews navigate their urban spiderweb? Li Keqing has had enough. Something must be done. We surely cannot save everyone, but we can owe it to everyone to try to save as many as we can. Double bogey. A uh, man had to have, had to have hobbies in the professional world. Everyone did. For some, it was drinking or smoking. For others, it was women. Yay. For else, others still, it would be concerts or operas or gambling or whatever else a Pearl, or Pearl River Delta could truly offer a man. In that regard, the opportunities were truly endless. Murutake had just discovered that Consul General Takashima's hobby was golf, and he was beginning to seriously regret that. I need... What? 10%? Almost 1% increase in growth? A little more deficit? Whatever. There's nothing I'd like more than to play a game at Augusta, but those Americans are so exclusive with their membership. They say nothing of the racial policy, of course. The old school in Scotland is a must-see, which I hope to get to one day, but Colby is a beautiful course in its own right, though I must say it's exhausting to lug yourself up and down those hills. I would imagine so. Do you golf often, Chief Executive? You must seem... You must. Businessmen always love golf. How have you forgot? found it? You must. You seem like the man who would have a strong putting game, I'm sure of that. So many of my friends have struggled with putting, nothing more frustrating than missing a short putt. I watched them get red and angry themselves. It's hilarious, truly hilarious. Even Arnold Palmer misses those every now and then. And Arnold Palmer, I did hear he did quite well at the Scottish Open. One more favor. My apologies, Consul General, but I have a meeting with the legislators today. Good day. Hmm. Right now we can't lose that seat. Game one more favor. The Japanese consuls should become frustrated with us. If they become frustrated, if that's that's a major if they become frustrated. 
You know, we're here to collect political power and crop down, crop down on corruption, crop, crack down on corruption. I can't afford to lose another seat because we're literally at 50. So, yeah, not good. And the air we breathe. It's no wonder why the workers are often distracted from their tasks. How can anyone be expected to focus when they're busy coughing up noxious fumes drifting over from, from the factories on the Pearl River and spitting up tainted water from the very same body of water polluted by those very same factories? Distracted people with short lifespans bring in less profit. Therefore, instead of trying to convince the other corporations to treat the symptoms of despair, we will get them to agree to an easier and more effective solution of treating the po problem at the source. And Koshu Yakuza, uh, kind of the earnings from the street, protection, fraud, and hundred other crimes. And Hong Kong bags of opium flow through the streets like the water in the River Pearl, or Pearl River, bringing poisonous coverage to the masses in Macau. Uh, millions change hands in seconds with a review of a single tile. With the Silicon years in full swing, businesses in all sectors. Uh, Guangdong boom, a careful dance is played between the forces of order and crime as triads and Yakuza dance and fight in the underworld. Below the street of law-abiding citizens, from the lowly laborer to the chief executive himself, there lies corruption. Parasitic, pervasive, and seductive. Not bueno. Come on. Because right now they're at 29.7, 28.7. We're literally 1% 1 1 off. Well, that sucks. We're still building up roads, though. The casino job, huh? Because we get about 1% growth, right? Of corruption. Yeah. There, you can do that 1%. I want to see how much corruption we get after uh, triads no longer contribute to corruption. The executive floor of Sony headquarters we cleared out of the day, or cleared out for the night, with a handful of trusted secretary, or security men pacing their hallway against interlopers. Most were lapel pins of Sony or Chung Kong, but a few were a more motley sort, with ragged knife scars hewn into the sun of blistered skin. Stanley, we've known each other for years, Marie asked the half-jokingly. The lights of Port Shorey's ferries visible behind him, why the security? One well, can't be too careful, Stanley Hill replied jocularly. The Okoye's men can be anywhere, and I need protection. The tribes have been a, sta a stalemate with the Okoye Hideke's Yakuza gangs for years, whether it be smuggling, buy strings, you name it, Lee noted, turning the pages on a police report. Seriously, what's this about? Nothing major, Stanley smirked, playing with his grand psycho watch. I'm going to legitimate. What? Lee grants Morita dumbfounded? What do you mean? We're going to make a play in Macau, Stanley continues, wag swagger in his voice, gambling. And I don't mean roadside mahjong or the horse races at Happy Valley. I mean real casinos, like sucking in money from across the sphere. Pure profit. A money laundering, Marita realized. Casinos aren't legal, Stanley. Yet, Stanley cut in. But if they were made legal with an official license, then we could knock Yokoi down a peg before end, and we can run the Yakuza out of town. And the tribes would forever be in your debt. Partners of crime in 1933. A brief memory. Early autumn, chill winds blew seaward. Uh, rattling right the wooden boards of the house, clear sky, faint clouds, wide against the open blue. The breeze swept the dead leaves outside like a broom lashed to a whip. Lamb remembered the circle of relatives among whom he sat. The smell of freshly laid or fried mantau waked from the center. You remember the words they'd traded over buns dunked in condensed milk long, long ago, said a relative. When a land team with barbarians and wars rage or folks. Uh, oh, hello. My apologies. Uh, it's auto saving. And you know, it takes forever to auto save, too. We need more stability. War sports are decent. Um, our folks forded the rivers, climbed the mountains, saw the sea, and a brocades. They slew the silk. It went as far as Rome. Then the emperors in gold ordered us westwards towards the expanse. I know, he said. Chewing mouthfuls of crunchy bun tinged with sweet milk. Grandfather told me that already. Uncle wouldn't stop blabbering about it either. I know, he said. Uh, I left her proceeded. Uh, someday, the uncle said, someday you'll work in the family business, threading the patterns you will do in the Chao Zhao style, where you'll wander, people will know. Oh, him, they say, they will say. He's from Chao Zhao. Ah, Sion, ah, Sion, are you? Are you ready? He nodded. Yes, Uncle. I'll be ready. He gave a smile. A promise made in sweet times, unbuckled by the force of time. Keep propping it up. Actually, can we increase this further? No, we're at the highest as we possibly can go already. Darn it. I don't think this changed at all, has it? Oh, it did! Boom, look at that. Just in case. Boom, look at that. 67.85. There you go. So, uh, 63% support. Almost 50% support from the Chinese, and 68% support from the Japanese, so. Problem with worker suicides. Murita Kao caught up with his friend and ally, Li Kaxing, and the aftermath of yet another great bruising debate among the controlling powers of the LECO. The council chamber was empty. Ever, uh, every other LECO member had already having left. Murita sighed, shook his head, slumped his shoulders, and started to complain, like I do. It's like banging your head on a thrice darn wall. Listen to those excuses to keep spewing. Also, Shida goes on and on like one of his poorly made record players about cops. Ibuka runs around in bloody circles blaming the victim. How typical of him, the guy. At least Kumai, the Manchurian, is honest that we don't. He just doesn't care. He just says it's a waste of his time. 
and the unusually bitter. Not in reply, darn it all to heck of okay. We know all too well what's wrong here. If a single Japanese dies, every elite in this whole country, say from Koshi to Macau and Hong Kong, will scream at the top of their lungs. But if 50,000 or so Chinese or even Zhujin die, those heartless, shameless subhumans wouldn't care at all. The air hung heavy for a while, and the last two sided and made it part ways. Let's get back together tomorrow. What you gonna do about it? There's really nothing you can do right now. Reach out and listen, though, properly. It wouldn't be bad. Uh, reduce the seats, but the breakneck pace of urbanization in Guangdong has uprooted countless communities into cramped, airless tenements and to f in unfamiliar territory before packing them into def deafening factory floors as cogs in a mammoth machine. It's no wonder that the populace feels like their issues are insurmountable, surrounded as they are by strangers on every side. If no one else will listen to them, we will. We'll direct the health authorities to establish hotlines and social outreach programs that rebuild something resembling organic communities in our growing megacities. We'll have to give people some someone who will listen to them today so that they may live tomorrow. Go shoot unit on filter. You should go open the creaking door of her apartment to a whiff of sulfurous smoke into an acrid sitting or sting in her nostrils. The patch has been running all night, and the winds were blowing back towards Koshu, sending plumes of smog over the city. The weather report never mentioned these days, but the residents learned to take precautions, and Yoshiko hurriedly affixed a sky blue cloth mask to her face. A double chuck, double decker street tram pulled up with a clang of a bell, and Yoshiko clambered aboard, squeezing herself into the space remaining. The windows were sensibly kept shut, but this only treated the oppressive, cl uh, cloying haze outside for the stale, sweaty heat of human bodies pendant inside like animals. The mask, as flimsy as it was, cut out the worst of the stench. Her mind odyssey, or mini odyssey, and his wave of chill, clean air washed over her beyond the entrance to the Canton Fujian Quaron's offices. Yoshiko idly considered her next door as she boiled filtered water in the break room for her morning tea, the only thing that eased a persistent scratching in her throat. Out of the chief executive had promised to do something, she sat at her desk, slipping her fingers beneath the strings behind her ears to remove her mask. As the surface was gritty, the blue tarnished by smoke and soot. Yeah. Beginning of the product cycle. We support Sony. And six oh my god, six percent. Temporary profitability bonuses, yeah. That makes sense. Well it's not gonna be super profitable. Change the market so to Brazil we go. We do have a lot of political power this time, so. I'll do that stuff too. Mm. You know, I'll also do these small ones, since we have the political power for now. We'll build up more, anyways. But still. A cry for help. Yahui, are you okay? I'm worried about you. Uh, Yahui was not okay. He had not slept well in weeks. He spent his days at the factories and his evenings holed up in his apartment doing the only barest minimum to keep himself going. He was visibly miserable and gaunt. And why would he not be when his life held so little meaning? Although he had never admitted to Lin, he had been looking up to the nets around the building lately with contempt, idly wondering if their absence would give him an easier way of ending his misery. In response to Lin's query, he simply shrugged. Her look of worry grew visibly. Uh, you know, they have a number you can call now if you're feeling like this. Peng's brother tried it and he says it helped, I don't know. But it can't hurt, can it? A phone number. How oh, very on brand for the world they lived in. Yeah. Yahui almost scoffed, but something in Lin's eyes made him hesitate. All right, I might try. He almost didn't, but later that night, as his inner demons began to wear, wear away at him, he cursed under his breath and picked up the phone. If nothing else, it was less effort than going downstairs and walking in front of a truck. The doubt tone began to buzz once, twice, thrice. As he waited, he wondered what the person on the other end would say. What wisdom could a disembodied voice offer him that would make his living hell any better? It would pass the time, at least. Finally, the tone cut off and a tinny voice came through. You have reached the Guangdong suicide hotline. Our operators are currently all occupied. <laughs> Please hold. For a brief moment, I shouldn't laugh at that. He felt like it, it was falling even further into despair before he suddenly found himself laughing at the clinical absurdity. How many other people like him were there for the entire network to be occupied? For the first time in what felt like years, Yahui felt filled with mirth. If anything, knowing that he was not alone in his struggle made him feel just a little bit better. Misery is company, it seems, and the value of life. We must emphasize to the corporates that the people who work for them are not an inexhaustible resource. They aren't a resource at all, but to be completely honest. But small steps take it, must be taken before large ones. Every person who is able to come into the work tomorrow is another person who gets better at their job and can be more productive and efficient than they were yesterday. Experience is key to success, and time is needed to develop experience. Absolutely. Summino. Summonium. It was rush hour. The sky was dark, and as gray as asphalt paved street from which that distinctive smell of rain hitting the surface was beginning to emanate. Loud beeps and shouting permeated the chaotic atmosphere, but Morita could not experience any of this. His black Toyota sentry car had been especially fabricated for total insulation, as his peak hatted chauffeur uh, turned to exchange a few words he started to ponder on the average inhabitant's troubles. Anything bothering you, sir? As a matter of fact, yes, I was reflecting upon the troubles of the average toiler living here. But don't you believe all this chaos, all this pollution, all this rubbish is taking a toll on the well-being? Absolutely, Mr. Chief Executive. I hope that we, hold, that we always might be... 
owe these people as much as I do my shareholders, for if we did not have them, what would we have? They are the flesh and blood of the place. Are you by chance familiar with the story of Agrippa Menenius Lanatus, Mr. Chief Executive? Why, yes, of course, Lan. As we magnates are the belly, these poor souls are the hands that feed us. But if a limb is sick, you'd rather cut it off as Kamai would, or would you rather have a nurse back at health? After all, stronger arm gathers more food, doesn't it? If only that perfidious Ibuka would figure this out as well. Surely the second, sir. Imagine that for a moment a Guangdong in which the air is safe to breathe. The workplace has protected the population healthy, well educated, safe from crime, capable to earn a living wage, and actively invested in this place's growth. Wouldn't this limb be stronger than what we had today, although substantial progress has been made? Still, today issues uh, lie quiescent until the tide rises, that is, lion rock spirit. Case goes. Oh, case closed. Sergeant Kawasaki uh, stared at the case file one last time, and then Asai began to ascend the ladder. Piles and piles of books and files accompanying his view. As the rungs amassed under his feet, closer and closer to the file his final destination, for a moment, he hesitated and looked all around. One bookshelf among many, filled with piles and piles, dreams and reams of human suffering and the wickedness which man inflicts upon man, carefully ordered and categorized, an internal order reflecting a projected desire for uh, one outside. A few shells beyond, the occasions where this projection manifested into reality were stored, assurances that life waiting in a sea of human filth had meant beyond a paycheck and was able to hit people and get away with it. But that was over there, and he was over here where the cold cases were kept, a history of a thousand failures preserved for posterity. Until Heckfro was over, new evidence propped up, whatever came first. These things happen. No matter what a detective novel, what have you believed, crimes were not puzzles. Strict sequences of cause and effect which led one to define a solution. You could lose a battle as long as you kept winning the war, but this was a war which could never be won conclusively, especially not with the majority of the population biting at your ankles like rabid dogs, conspiring to drag you down to the lake of crap. But there was no sense in sugarcoating it. Kawasaki had failed, and now he had to move on. Another hooker had been found stabbed to death in the back alley. A final pang of doubt set in. Had they missed something important, something major? He shook his head, and the uh, file slid backwards into the tomb. What did we miss? Oh, crap. That's really not good for us. Whew. Actually, it's, it, could be, it could be a lot worse, actually. But still. Underperforming. It's low. That's not good. Hmm. After that, I guess we're going to do... Maybe this one? Increase Chinese support. Yeah, we could use this one. Cops patrol streets in ones and not in twos because past experience taught them that shakedowns are easier without a second witness. Cops detain people longer and legal than, than surgeons said because it's the best way to get what they want to hear. Much of the petty corruption of the Guangdong police force is embedded into its procedures and precedents like so. Hence why you'll barely get any more than a helpless shrug when you and you see an officer and, or ask an officer why they keep asking misplacing evidence and why they keep beating helpless suspects up because to them it's how it's always been and it's always paid the bills. Change of protocols, mandate two brothers per beat. Um, define strict limits on the use of force, enforce proper, appropriate custody durations for every felony, offense and misdemeanor, and corruption in the ranks will plummet. Not completely, but predictably. Anything here? We're considering the value of life. Chief Executive Morito Kale was making a radio speech that he and everyone in the recording studio knew would send shockwaves across Koshu and the whole of Guangdong. That was because the contents of a speech were something nearly unprecedented in Guangdong history, an honest level speech. Uh, life is a life, and I, as Chief Executive Morito, uh, Akeo, admit freely that we have often or failed to recognize that. It is my er earnest hope that my initiatives will be able to remediate that. After all, a society that so casually, so unthinkably consumes people's lives in a search for profit has no hope of being uh, healthy, or nor can it can hope to continue in profit for long. After the speech concluded, Morito was greeted by external secretary Masashida Masaharu, chief executive. You have raised some fairly good points in my view, despite whatever Ibuka and Kumai might say. I have every reason to believe in your approach, after all. Here's a here his tone became conspiratorial. It's cheaper to keep a skilled worker that lie than a trainer from scratch. Murita's eyes switched, but he nodded politely nonetheless. Thank you, external secretary. A silent partner. And I'm told that I was it was your decision instead of the altercation with the truck, was it? Major Yoshinori asked Colonel Miyazaki, holding a pen towards the captain's ranking insignia. Yes, sir, yes, sir, replied the captain, and beats a sweat rolling down his forehead. Well, I hope you appreciate the potential gravity of the situation, you almost said in motion. That was far too close. If it wasn't for the sheer incompetence of our mongrel's colleagues, we would be knee deep in it right now. I'm surrounded by imbeciles over here and over there. Tell me, uh, will balancing two sets of imbeciles calling themselves officers of the law help us maintain a position in Asia in any way? Sir, no, sir, correct. Which makes it very fortunate for your sake that this did not spill over. A new plan's already in motion. You'll be informed of it in due time. Now get out of my sight, Captain. He scarpened it off quickly, and Miyazaki moved his hand over to the phone. Perhaps a settler approach was needed. Mr. Komai, Colonel Miyazaki is speaking. A test site close to home. Had Indonesia always been that unstable? Ponder of Morita Akeo. A student constantly tapping against his desk, he didn't remember it being on the verge of a civil war, yet the country had developed into a mess right before his eyes. But also Japan's. It was certainly going to be a black eye on the sphere, but the first conflict meant new testing grounds for the PTRG. 
He picked up the receiver and dialed the number of several military commanders stationed back in Japan, much to his expe expectation. The PTRG was given significantly more freedom and resources to operate with. Losing control of Indonesia was bad enough as is, but if the rebels managed to find a way to overthrow Sukarno's government, a follow will be disastrous, that is, for the Emperor of Japan. Guangdong has always been a state about turning profit, and war was no different. The chief executive picked up several reports from the PTRG team, detailing new armor prototypes that the companies had sent in recently. With the expertise of the scientists in both the PTRG and the companies, and a little bit of luck to extend Indonesia's incoming civil war, Guangdong would be able to collect all the data needed in order to make a decision on which product to support. If anything, he could use a comparison between the IJA base units and the PTRG unit to drive up the sales price even more when he sold the prototypes back to the mainland. Failing to prove the, to prove the prototype's worthiness would negatively impact Guangdong's financial and political standing. Thankfully, Guangdong has no tolerance for failure whatsoever. Nice. The line's out a year. Hitachi's also chipped in. There you go. Boom. And this is the one I used initially earlier, so... There you go. Um, what do we got for this? Still not bad. 10% is not terrible. So we need type 29 tanks. I'm just going to buy more tanks anyways. We're going to need it. Um, fighting in general conditions. River combat. Mountain. Stormy. Straight crossings. Republic of Indonesia. Eh? New rules of engagements. Bring on corruption. Casino license, huh? Chinese support, increased police support, yeah. That'd be nice. A man is shot on uh, Tin Chiu Street in broad daylight. The crowd scatter and scream as the victim dies atop the pool of his own blood. Police arrive an hour later, spent half that hunting for the suspect, then head back to the precinct for drinks, cold beer for cold case. Days later, the superintendent lambasts reporters in a press conference for suggesting that the men in uniform are anything but diligent. Guangdong's jaded citizenry have personally seen the song and dance at least once in their lives. Small wonder why they expect the worst from their tax money work. We can bring confidence to them by bringing their beat cops from air-conditioned offices to small outposts closer to the crime scenes within their bailiwick. Shifting alliances. Oh, crap. This day is wave of endless. Uh, a tide of intriguing whispers from within the Legislative Council surround the sudden shifting loyalties of certain lawmakers. Three faces advanced from the usual caucuses of three had turn appeared in touch as contingent. Soon all the whispers were asking the same question. How much could have Tashi paid them, they asked each other. That was an inevitable question. The men in question had so abruptly crossed the aisle that something had been lubricated the, to shift their mind. How much can I get for myself? Where do I look? They ask themselves. The tide uh, shifts once more. Tash has gone too far, though, trying to clue the blood code through subversive means. Oh boy. I mean, technically, we're already down on our luck for this stuff, anyways, too, so. They have 17 out of 35 seats in Dominant Legislative Council. Reckon River Lico members are pledging their allegiance. Uh, to Tachi, some despite the company's record books looking completely normal. Perhaps the second pass will feel uh, potential discrepancies. Bribe Tachi representatives. Two can always play whatever game of bribery in Guangdong. Whatever Tachi's intentions may be, we can get a shift a little cash into certain Leko members to get them back on our side, not Hitachi's. And certain Hitachi representatives. If cash doesn't uh, work in Guangdong, threats of violence are another tried and true method of convincing Leko members to align with their vision, not Hitachi's. Um, uh, through corruption and political intimidation, Hitachi is making inroads into accumulating a greater share of the Leko. We need 35, so we're pretty good. The Indonesian summons. Uh, the Greater East Asian Ministry is pleased to announce that the state government uh, of Guangdong is voluntary to send a research division to Indonesia to help the Great East Asia co prosperity sphere in its fight against the forces of Western imperialism. General Nagano Shigeto uh, put the paper down, dismayed. Another, anyone with a little bit of S sense could tell why Guangdong had really volunteered to send soldiers, his soldiers, out into the tropical heck hall. It was allowed to test some sort of the new technological horror they call weapons. Just wonderful, wasn't it? Sure, the executives were happy to have an easy opportunity to profit off the preservation of imperial glory and get in Tokyo's good graces, but Nagano saw something differently. Money didn't mean anything to him. To him, all this Indonesian volunteering nonsense was just a boondoggle. Men being sent to fight a good fight, but with the suspect weapons and even more suspect leadership. The heck of Malaya was proof enough of that already. But what choice did Nagano really have? None. Mine is not the question. Why is it? Darn it all. And go ahead. So we're not going to really do much here on they They have only half the seats they really need, so... Um, Pellet, some vices. The public health ordinance. Well, we need to do all those. So we can vote on that next. Um, 
police boxes. Yeah. I still want more support. Oh, we actually have more support. Look at that. Yeah. It's not bad. Could be better, though. Uh, water purity control. Gallons pollutants are being unnecessarily dumped into the upstream of the Pearl River by an industry without any regard for the residents downstream. With this in mind, it should come as no surprise that waterborne illnesses and toxic contamination are a shockingly common part of the lives of everyday people in the poorest regions of the Three Pearls. We'll direct the corporations with state funds if needed to treat contaminants or contaminants when it's possible and to safely dispose of them when it's not. Together, we'll clear the water table we rely on uh, of a toxic element so that we might lead all healthy lives. That'd probably be very good. Desk duty, huh? Oh, so they got these guys done. Nice. Uh, okay. Tanaka Morihiro, a regular officer of the Guangdong Police, had been a force of a uh, man a phone line and made it made him bitter beyond belief. He had raised a complaint about the superior officer, a hardy guy named Izumi Ichiro, and paid the price for it. The man had used excessive force in an arrest that went against police policy, and when Tanaka reported it, Izumi immediately retaliated, and no one, neither the Japanese nor his fellow Zujin, spoke up for him. As a result, he had been put on desk duty. He had been interviewed by new internal affairs department, but he suspected nothing was likely to come out of it. So much for a greater career in the Guangdong police, Tanaka thought. So much for being a part of and at this point, the phone rang. He picked up the phone. It was not a hotline caller, but instead it was an interviewer from the internal affairs department. It's me, Takayama. Aisaku from the Internal Affairs. Uh, can you come over here, Tanaka? I've got something to discuss with you. Tanaka went to the Internal Affairs Department and sat down in Takayama's office. Looking to his left through a glass window with a commanding view of the main area of the office, he saw a familiar face uh, behind a desk manning a phone line. He rolled around to face Takayama, who was smirking. Is that the Internal Affairs man nodded? Yes, yeah, so as your complaint was sustained. Now, we can't spare anyone due to manpower shortages, or I'd see that fat guy, Izuma kicked out, or Izumi kicked out before he could say, uh, uh, Chikusho. Regardless, let this be a sign that we're here to see that the new rules are respected, or at least not flagrantly violated as beforehand. It's not perfect, but it's the bare minimum. Tanaka felt confused. Maybe there was something to this new department of theirs, or perhaps not at all. After all, Tanaka had gone used to his job as it was, no matter how much he hated it. Oi, Takayama, is there a way I could uh, sign up to join you? Help progress with reform in the police force. It's good to see you, Takayama. Can I go back to work now? There you go. Nice. Pretty good. Underperforming and low. Well, that's not a deal, is it? How many more days we got? We got two months left. I save our political power for all that big stuff. Hey, investments in audio and video technology. It always comes at the work time. Jurisdiction friction. With the glares watchful and the uniforms well pressed, the men of the camp by waited the next order. Oh crap. They knew exactly what would follow. Every movement had been carefully choreographed weeks in advance. As the knowledge of the drugs being stored in this location had been withheld from the police for months, they certainly had more than enough time to drill the plan into themselves. Three sharp uh, blasts later, uh, a confined cacophony was let loose. Bullets streaked in and flailed aimlessly around, about, and out. Uh, the final shots of the gangsters were smothered by the charge of the camp by tie and silence returned to the streets a great deal more than ever before. The hall from inside was paraded to the rows of peering eyes that now hid far from the street. The message had been made. The camp by tie were the law, and nothing would be allowed to get in their way. Not even the police. The police can only clean up after the camp by tie. Alright, so we're here now. Is there anything else here? We're at 20. We'll sacrifice it once. Why not? Crack down corruption, we'll be okay. Get more tanks. We're gonna need more tanks. Hmm, straight battles. Let's come over here. For now. See. There you go. We need more political power. As intended, Die Grimace as he activated the newly installed infrared sight, which began transmitting a live feed of the dense jungles to the driver's seat of his tank. The first units to use Tony's new technology, he was cheerfully informed that the tool could pinpoint any heat signature under 100 meters away. Naturally, the brief was coupled with orders to seize a settlement far outside of normal operating range. They got nowhere off to hide, his commander said, with annoyance. Die realized that the tool was working perfectly and it was helpfully displaying a wall of orange light across the screen. He was showing every single heat signature in the jungle at noon. 
As uh, Cora neared the village, Dai peered out from the hatch, seeing a deserted town and an empty tree line. Returning to the infrared scanner, his environment was blanketed in uniform orange, revealing no distinct signatures but the Cora's own vehicles, which were just beginning to enter the village. As the first tank passed the gate of the town, anti-tank fire shattered the tent's silence, as the four vehicles were reformed into plumes of yellow on the monitor. Dai hastily began retreating as the Cora fired on the village, blanketing the screen with dozens of orange and yellow spots. Watching from a distance, Dai watched as the unit continued to bombard the settlement long after the last insurgent had fled. The results unsatisfactory, and the smokestacks quit smoking. In the modern day, the primary issues of industrial smog are quite simple to mitigate using the right technology, filters, and efficient design. All these are, however, quite expensive, and in the past, corporations have preferred to be cheap instead of clean. That ends now. We'll set new standards for all others to follow, requiring them to purchase the necessary equipment and keep the air that employees breathe clean and healthy. Take your tap dance. Master Shia to model functions multiply. Uh, no one in sight. Fujitsu fumbles yet again, stony stocks slips and slides. It made the sensationalist headlines. Uh, there was an uncomfortable amount of truth. The reports from each three of these companies had carried a similar selection of disappointing returns of the last quarter. Upward spread like wildfire between the markets and media as stock prices had taken a slump. Yet the same extent of the reversal of fortunes was not met by Hitachi, whose price held firm while all the others wavered. Soon another phrase appeared again and again in the headlines, a vote of confidence and the maturing quality. Perhaps it was luck, perhaps not, that did not matter. Guan Dung has come to need any sort of hope from this business, no matter the place. Hitachi wins again. Oh, well, that's not good. Ooh. Police boxes. The Chinese family said, saw a new police box being put up in their neighborhood. The family members looked at each other with suspicion. The police had uh, only ever responded in and with excessive force back in the day, so the family decided among themselves to give the box a wide berth and wait for their developments, of course. Because why wouldn't you? As time passed, the family was pleasantly surprised by the inhabitants of the police box. It was almost one or two policemen, but at least one of whom spoke Cantonese fluently at all times. Far from patrolling in force or setting shifts and watching the neighborhood, they wore minimal armor and walked and talked with the people they were serving. They responded to small incidents and called in backup when things became too difficult, keeping interested onlookers at a safe distance rather than arresting people en masse like what they once did. The family was still wary. Surely in Guangdong, the police were not friends with the people, but even now and then a child ran after the officers in and out of the police boxes and said something. The officer, far from like, chewing the kid out, would have a pleasant conversation with him or her, and everyone else noticed. Like it or not, the police in the new pre presence were here to stay in Guangdong. Well, the police authorities wondered if it was enough or whether it might be beneficial to pay for more of them. They concluded that more of the police boxes strategically the place would be beneficial. Oh crap, I didn't realize we could, can't do this one too. Well, it is what it is. The public court ordinance. Stop got efforts to combat the various health crises in Guangdong simply cannot increase the overall quality of health without a concerted and focused effort across multiple governmental departments. However, the only way to expand the powers of the government enough to accomplish this and contract dedicated companies to address the issue if necessary lies to the Legislative Council, which we're going to wait because I want to get through all this uh, Hitachi crap first. If it's possible to get through that first. I don't know. Because we've got a lot of police stuff to do here too. Language training. As has been observed in multiple and multilingual societies throughout history, the people who speak one language with, while the people who matter slightly less speak another. Complications arise when both comprise their law enforcement agencies. Such divides cause officer and a civilian both tragedy and grief in Guangdong. More than one plea for help was left unne unheeded because the officer on duty understood no counter needs. And native policemen were often dispatched to the wrong locations because their orders were written and told in Japanese. To remedy the divide, Chief Executive Morita has authorized extensive bilingual training programs for all policemen regardless of rank. The usual suspects hem and haul over his cost, as usual, so the CEO tunes him out. 61, 36. They drink this stuff, Murita Kao and Li Kuxing. Uh, both dressed in the lab coats took a look at the results of the first round of river water tests as the scientists fussed over the implements and cleaned up the laboratory. Reading the results with interpretive notes provided by the chief scientists, they wanted to vomit. The water was disgustingly filthy. Uh, a myriad of biological contaminants of countless types of sizes and toxicities, trace uh, fecal matter, urea, germs, bacteria, and all of the poisons that sprung to birth from the tormented, beautiful earth. And there were various poisonous chemical compounds in the water, too. Things like uh, perch, uh, perchlorothylene, and chloroform. Worst of all, there was no amount of trace metals, lead, cad cadmium, mercury, you name it, that had no place in any water, let alone the waters of the Pearl River. Lee, its face almost green and forced his words out. You realize, don't you? Okay, oh, that a good chunk of the population not being able to afford the imported waters and instead of forced to drink this filth? Marita saw his friend's state and decided to uh, uh, try to quip to improve his mood. Maybe if we made everyone's tea out of this water, even that much sure and good for nothing, Komai would back us up on this. Lee lost his mind laughing and Marita joined him. Reports from the rural cities. Wandong Police Force incident. Proactive deployment of the Kampatai agent. Or uh, Kampatai against an uptick in gang violence across the regions outside of the Three Pearls. Uh, the recent deployment of Kempata units across the rural regions of Guangdong has been successful in combating the gangs that have been taking hold of these regions. 
the bo this bodes well for the fight against gang encroachment for the reputation of the police force. Only the elusive presence of these gangs were known, and firm leads for the presence of precise whereabouts have never gone further than rumors. Evidence to substantiate these rumors were diffused, but a lack of action to capitalize on such evidence is thus a cause for concern. Blame for the situation prior to Camp Pontiac intervention had already been shifted towards police. Questions over the lack of concrete knowledge of the gangs had already been raised and will need answers. The effectiveness and precision of the Camp Pontiac raised questions in turn. This operation would have required intelligence, intelligence which was not made available to the police. Ultimately, our own failures have been laid bare, but the deceit of the Camp Pontiac has been too. A sign post outside toward a treacherous road. Recall, 1958. Are we not fighting over mountains or hills or jungles or... 30 degrees? Marita watched as Lee Pace's emptied office one last time, killing time before the end of his day. Are you sure you're fine with me taking the people I asked for to kill? Lee asked, raising his eyebrow at Marita. You'll be letting go of some of the best salesmen and managers Sony has. Believe me, I know, Marita said, leaning against the open door, sighing. I'm still thinking of what to tell the reporters once they figure out just who's leading Sony. Just one more headline for the papers, Lee said, grimacing. Uh, Lee takes half the house with him in the divorce. Oh, man, I need more tennis uh, Well, they don't have the full picture, either. That, or they're just uh, sensationalizing the story, which might be better, to be honest. Marita straightened himself in the doorway. If they assume this is on bad terms, then it should be a few more months to get everything up and running. At that, Lee chuckled. With the money connections I've made from my time at Sony, I won't need that much time to get Chong Kong off the ground. The Chinese districts need food, medicine, entertainment, and the Japanese won't do anything about it. Then, you know what, I will. The two looked over the room once more, checking if anything had been left behind. Nothing was, except for the sleepless nights and uh, the feverish days that Lee had spent managing Sony's affairs as Marita's second command and closest friend. I would have made it this far without you, Kashin, Morita said, his Cantonese now near flawless. Who am I to stop you from making your own fortune once again? Two lives walking in parallel. And do small things right. Men often compare their achievements to the mountain peaks, tall, uh, ginormous, and distant, and nevertheless conquered. The chief executive sees in the police force a bottomless pit dug over the course of decades until the more high-profile crimes are convicted. All he has to make a mountain of are fluff pieces. Stolen goods returned to their owners, school children reunited with their parents, lost pets rescued to the local pounds, pebbles snuck as far back as page 14 of the South China Morning Post. As the saying goes, it takes 10 years to establish a reputation, and 10 seconds to ruin it. In 10 years, Guangdong's law enforcement will have either bought the mountain out of the pebbles or remain stuck in its own pit. There is no harm in trying either way, though. At least 76% is okay. Full conspiracy, not there yet. And another event. One shoot of this too. Ooh, the Americans are here too, huh? Pattern recognition. Just drive. I don't care where. It could be to Moscow if you want. As U.S. Chief Executive, the police commissioner looked out of the tinted window towards the Koshu Marino. Despite the best and brightest of Guangdong's efforts, the neon signs that clamor for attention from the millions of would-be customers and should have been regulars could only change uh, for the, the fog that smothered them. The inside of the car was nothing special. Same creamy upholstery, same plush seats as what an aged salary man could expect to find in a taxi, of course. That's what made it peculiar of all, at all, considering who he was sitting next to by the side. The commissioner said the chief executive did not look at him. His head craned downwards into the mess of dossiers and files that lay at his feet. Too messy to have been organized by secretary, at least a competent man, or competent one. This was all him. When I first took up this job, I was told by my colleagues that this was a fool's errand. That is, the task of cleaning up the streets over a little corner of what the, of the world was a Sisyphean one. The police commissioner not saying anything, only nodding his head to signify that he had caught every word. Uh, that the walls of the door would be too strong to keep back at bay. Look at this poor Suzuki, bested by the forces that could not, he could not understand. Uh, when the place stopped spinning, uh, the only thing they could do was fall, fall, fall to the ground. But I'm not Suzuki Taichi, am I, commissioner? The car stopped. Making a gentle turn to the dense, dark alleyway, still idling, but now waiting for its master to fill its purpose. I'm not Suzuki Taichi, and I'm not some stupid puppet that they can just cut their strings and leave me to die. His voice began to rise in crescendo. I am chief executive, and I will put them down like the dogs they are. We both know who they are, don't we, Commissioner? The police commissioner turned to face the chief executive and simply handed him a manila folder before unlocking the, or unlocking the door to leave. Hitachi, chief executive, we're fighting Hitachi. Do small things right. Guan Dong Wa 101. It was a pleasant day in Guangdong, but Lam Hao Soon wasn't out enjoying it on the streets. <clears throat> Today he had a difficult job, helping out the Cantonese training for the Japanese beat cops and street officers on the force. Due to the chief executive's <coughs> uh, recent orders as implemented by the chief uh, commissioner, uh, by commissioner Amori, Japanese expatriate officers were not ordered to learn basic Cantonese to do their jobs. The man at the top of the police, it was rumored, had not shirked that duty himself. In fact, he had gone above and beyond. Now, apparently being fluent enough in Cantonese to hold technical conversations in the language, write documents in a manner indistinguishable from local Chinese, and read and understand books without recourse to a dictionary. More than a few of Lamb's new students were visibly displeased at having to rely upon Cantonese people to learn a so-called lesser language, but they comply with Lamb and the other officers' instructions. 
None of them had a choice after all. It was either learn Cantonese or get kicked off the force, no matter one's rank. I reminded Lam of his first few days on the job, how bitter he and the others have been about being forced to learn the language of the foreign invaders. Lam resisted the urge to let us shot him for it as the Japanese officers plied him overwhelm him. I was unprofessional. Besides, being a civilization person, I might about it, but I gained him some something for little to no cost. But it was going to go back to work. Lam had an intrusive thought, but then perhaps putting some more effort into it might help him yet more. He continued, Sure, why not? Can't do too much harm. God dang it. Uh, let me do this one first. What a big old press conference first. Hey, we've got river crossings. We've got stormy rainy weather. We need mountains, and te uh, test sites, and jungles. And I can hold. Are these mountains here? Yeah, it looks like mountains to me. Still have a slight deficit, huh? Where are you? you? You are very slow. The national team. The job had not been outlined as easy, managing investments on behalf of the chief executive, but sometimes Ren thought he and his team were set up to fail. Another stupid drop? Uh, yeah, it happened almost an hour after we opened this morning. Multiple large cell orders by people we've not been able to contact yet. My team is trying, though. It also shook out a number of other cell orders about an hour later. And we're managed to keep the stock from dipping too low, but it's becoming too much to handle. The stock prices won't be able to withstand too many more short squeezes. I think we should get some extra help. Um, you think telling me someone's screwing with us, someone that wants our company to fall. Ren could think of a few people that could do that want that to happen. Ren wiped his forehead, and his office had gone too stuffy, and his suit clung to him like a vice. Keep going. If I get up with this four, all these sellers have been directed at each major company in Guangdong aside from Hitachi. I believe that Hitachi might be the ones behind the massive sell orders that occurred this morning. Their stock has been mostly untouched by the sell orders. Hitachi had always been a vocal opponent against the chief executive and the company he represented. Ren should have seen this coming, it's far too late to think about that. Sure, sir, we would make a choice. Tell the team to request a trade to intervene, this is too much for us to handle. Hang on for as long as we can. Hang on for as long as we can. Oh wow, look at that. That's a lot of red. It's a lot of corruption. Well, so try him. We're not buying. Do the small things right. Doing smaller things right for once. Huh? The Organized Crime Bureau. Well, let's tell her some small vices first. No matter how much we try, crime advice will never truly be eradicated. The question is simply controlling it and making sure that the consequences do not affect society at large. The business and leisure facilities by Stanley Ho's contacts are not unique, but his promise a means to make sure that they don't spiral out of control or begin to work against their interests. Opium dens and Yakuza affiliated loan sharks will be outed as long as we turn a blind eye to the soap, plan uh, soap plans, topless bars, and other establishments in the Three Pearls. Better the devil we know, after all. Doing small things right for once. Lee Chun was seeing the police far more often these days, and to his pleasant surprise, they weren't conducting as many street arrests or taking as many bribes as they used to. In fact, it was all a lot more community oriented than it had been back in the day. More and more Zhujin and Chinese-speaking policemen were being deployed to the neighborhoods, and as a result, uh, police-civilian interactions were far more pedestrian. Can you find my lost birds? Which way is the department store? And that little urchin stuck his tongue out at me. Yeah, beat him up. Chun watches an officer directed a worker, who was doing it with a potty dance in his desperation to the nearest washroom. It reminded him of the kind of officer who had shown him their way when they arrived in Guangdong, leaving the ruins of their old village behind, without him. Chun was surely to be trapped in a dormitory now, and Chun resolved to find out that man and thank him if he could. Now, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. The police still had a lot to answer for. John thighs, he watched a man being bundled into a police wagon, but they, were, uh, they weren't as callous as they had once been. Years ago, it was a choice between the police and the camp I tie. John would have flipped the coin and picked which evil, whichever evil came up. Now, the police disciplining themselves and becoming more and more part of the community with each passing day. The choice was obvious to him. Or was it? He needed to watch and see more closely, hear what the others had to say, and so on. When he did that, he concluded the others shared his initial halting approval. His favorable impression was probably a mere outlier. How many more days do we have of this? Because this is not bad. We have 14 days. Will we have enough funds by then to do this? Honestly, no. So honestly, we just market it now. So, give us one more day and we'll just increase it by 10. Makes it slightly more profitable for us, so why not? Mass of congestion at Koshu Airport. It's complete chaos, sir. 27 different aircraft requested emergency landings. All of them. Tagged from Manchuria. The first is supposed to arrive in 14 minutes. The last only in 47. Holy crap. That's kind of extreme. 
Hey, dear tra traffic controller, Yang Yi Chen stood up from his desk, his voice failing him as he split, uh, spilled his coffee cup. Sent for a crap. Have all fl going flights canceled now and get the police. We're going to need them around. As David took in all information and walked out on the tower's control floor, the news did not go over well, judging by the panic sounds among the controllers. He would have joined them and helped out with the workload. Less than ten minutes later, uh, or five minutes later, uh, a detachment of armored cars screeched to a stop outside the terminals, even as Yang had barely gotten control of the aircraft control team. Uniformed men marched into the control room as they were across the rest of the airport, calming everyone down by a visible show of force. Uh, the captain introduced himself as Yang, revealing himself to be the head of Camp Baitai Regiment in Koshu, just close enough to hear the call for police reinforcements. We'll be taking control here, special orders from the government. All these flights are to be taken in, have the runways cleared off, and all other flights canceled. We'll be going, we'll be, we're going to be here for a while. Yang blinked, we already canceled all flights, sir. Captain smiled, good man. Order restored. Get in there. Got the TFM uh, 110 radio. Necessity is a mother of all inventions, as the saying goes, and an authorless and dateless phrase. Part of it still rings true after every single leap and bound that mankind makes. Part of it because invention's biological mother is crueler, darker, and more widespread than anyone else would like to admit. It is competition. Necessity brings about change, but the eternal drive of humanity, the inner mechanism that drives us forward to pull a position, is what perfect perfects is. Perfects it. This is why, faced with such powerful enemies, Sony cannot afford a misstep. The TFM 110 is many things, but it's certainly not a failure, packed with a record 11 transistors, all connected with a mesh of integrated circuits. The TFM 110 shows off Sony's prize values, efficiency, power, talent, all contained with a glossomer, glossomer aluminum case. Some may lament the age where a product's quality was decided by what it was, rather than who made the design, but to the Zhuzhen who made up Sony's customers, the only thing that matters is that their little home has borne fruit of their own. Marita's origins matters little. After all, he isn't what's for sale. Hey, that's not bad. Let's market it towards the United States of Brazil. Cool. Oh, due to future uh, larger product, product requirements, our initial product quality and interest will be reduced by 5%. Crap. At least we get one more seat, which is good, too. At least that's all done for now. Good job, West Russia. Yeah, you beat him up for that. And there go the Armenians. Yeah, at least we got one more seat. They have 24 seats now. Crap. Oh my god, everything just came out of here at a single time. Anubis Horribilis. In the dim of his office light, Chief Executive Marita Kale leered out at the document that lined his desk. The burden of proof was such a powerful thing, wasn't it? High definition scenes of Camp Fatai squads intimidating airport staff and Manchurian linked cargo planes played across his mind. Why? Why would Itachi try to pull off a scheme this large? They seemed to operate just fine under his rule, just as they did in Manchukuo. Was somehow Manchukuo making Hitachi do this for some reason? Were they on the brink, the worst, and increasingly most likely reason for the camp by tie and Hitachi's escalation cross the chief executive's mind? Of course it did. Try as he might to dismiss it, the reason that everything was unfolding now was all because of Hitachi's pieces were in place. All they needed was a coup de grace. Shaking away the thought. And Morita Kale read on, meaningless jargon coalesced into dreading, dread instilling accidents and reports at the end. The police commissioner, who had written the report, recommended four courses of action to deal with the power play. The first was to direct in with the garrison and the camp outside directly and bring them into the cold daylight. A second was to send out a feeler for contact within the Manchurian government and see whether they understood what's going on in Guangdong. And the third and fourth method was to either go to Tokyo or Nanjing for help. While banking on the support was a risky move, both nations had the power to move things their way and help fully understand what was going on under our noses. It was the fifth option not seen in the report. There always is an, another option. If they get this right, lads, twist the right arms and disappear to the right people, perhaps we can do it ourselves, after all. What is Guangdong but the shining monument to the doing it yourself mentality? If we have proven that the Camp Baitai's trickery, now is the time to use it. This runs been sure just as much as us. Let's talk. Took has more than enough uh, muscle to war off any would be 18 Brumaire. Are we technically not brother nations with China? Guangdong relies on Guangdong only. If the police is sufficiently prepared, we can take matters in our own hands. Now I'm going to ask Tokyo. Knowing how to celebrate. Pedro shouted for the ball, making a run past the midfield line, and Zhao fired a quick pass through to him. <coughs> Sprinting down towards uh, the opposing goal, a beefy center back stood in the way, crouching ready to dart to either side. Pedro grinned at him, made a pass the ball around his left side, but instead chipped it over his head and darted past him. Other forwards were running up on either side, but Pedro covered himself. He switched the ball onto his favorite left foot and sent it rocketing into the back of the net. The keeper never had a chance. Gutting Cha yelled Teodoro from the sidelines, holding a bottle of beer in the air. He took a deep swig and sauntered over to Lila, who was noticeably not celebrating her boyfriend's goal. Instead, she was fiddling with some strange device Teodoro had never seen before. Um, the st what is that? Teodoro asked her, trying his best not to slur his words and hiccup slightly. A radio, she replied, rustling, wrinkling her nose in concentration. It's from Japan, some company called Sony. Mother bought it last week. I just, I just don't know. 
She hit a few buttons. Suddenly, Ronnie Cord was blaring at the top volume across the beach side of Rio de Janeiro. Cheers went up from the guys playing football, and some of the bathers were even coming up to see what was going on. Lila patted her radio, and she and Teodoro began to sing along in raucous harmony. Hi, hi, Johnny. Hi, hi, Alfredo. Way through the trucks, uh, Stanley Hill's primary business is trading. Uh, including illicit goods, sourced from Japan and moved over the border into China or purchased in China and imported back into Guangdong as marked up prices. Beyond moving goods. Uh, the practice serves as an easy way for Stanley and his associates to launder their proceeds from other activities via generous invoices between associated businesses. To the extent that the goods being smuggled will not actively be turned against the chief executive, the government, or the people, we have reached an understanding of the triads, apart from some truly dangerous controlled substances, weapons, opium, or other narcotics. We'll give Stanley Hill's trucks more lenient checks so that he may build his war chest for the cornering of the underworld. Yeah, you do what you must, you know? 1936. The school bells rang. Lamb walked out of the class and right through the gates, outside which his uncle waited with the automobile. The car juddered and sputtered all the way to the Mulberry Plantation that lay a few miles north of the village. As they surmounted a uh, rise in the rows, Lamb saw the rows of trees and workers who ambled around those trunks, harvesting the cocoons of those pale sick moths who fluttered between the trees of workers, the plantations, and the world. Lamb waved and smiled at the workers who returned to the favor. They got off the car and walked to the plantation. So, his uncle said, in between his conversations with the workers, how are your studies? Learned to count to ten yet? Lamb pouted. That's when they teach in the first grade, uncle. He said, puffing his chest, chest outwardly. I'm studying trigonometry, stuff like that. His uncle chortled. Ah, smart boy. He ruffled Lamb's hair. Your father would be so proud. At the mention of his father, Lamb's gaze fell downwards, gloom in his eyes. Why do you have to go, father? I mean, it's an important time for the country. I don't get it either, uncle said. And turned and waved his hand across the plantation. Look at us. We've built this business for centuries, and out it goes to America. He goes to America, dreams in his head. Everyone in the family is giving it their all to keep this place afloat with a generalissimo caving into the Japanese at every turn, he sighs. Uh, revolutionaries like him, it's hard to understand what they're thinking of. Half listening to Uncle's rants, Lamb stared at a cocoon of pale silk moth as it hatched from its shell and whose wings fluttered away, away into the bright sunny day. Of moths and men whose fate beat away at the fluttering of those wings, dancing and dancing. How far is Hitachi? There are three, four out of five. I'm not sure we have enough focuses to do before we can... We have to vote on stuff. Woo. Oh, look at that. We can do this one too, though. New consumerism. Guangdong is transforming from a chimera of simple corporate experimentation to a collection of hardworking and creative personalities through the Silicon Dream. The economy is growing fast. Millions of people are forming a new middle class, and many population groups are able to truly benefit from capitalism. It's new and common consumption habits. Raid Yakuza Warehouses, the other element of Guangdong's underworld, the Yakuza, their own respectable representative, Yokoi Hideke, are firm in the pocket of the seedier parts of the Japanese expatriate population in Guangdong and are not at all amenable to what we propose as a future of Guangdong. Thankfully, we can give Stanley Ho and his triad contacts a leg up in their war in the shadows by tipping the scales of law and order against the Yakuza's businesses and warehouses along the Pearl River. We'll send Ali by and allow the Yakuza siren song of drugs and easy money in thrall Guangdong, not while we have something to say about it. One must be a realist. Sergeant Suomo Kazuya of the Guangdong Police Force, a Japanese officer originally from Kanagawa Prefecture, was joined by his fellow Kanagawa denizen, Officer Hishida Hakuya, on a rainy night patrol in Wan Chai District in Hong Kong. As usual, they, set, they saw the usual sights of vice and criminality, strip bars, dance clubs, business and love hotels, and all the rest, and began to shut them down in accordance with the usual orders from above. This time, however, it was different. Sergeant Sohuma, as all the other sergeants leading patrols that night in the place once known as Xiangang in Hong Kong, have been given orders from above that contained lists of businesses not to be shut down. The lists were not large relative to the ones that were earmarked for the usual shutdown and expropriation, but they're so large enough and close enough to the triads it was rumored to irritate Officer Ishida, who quietly muttered his displeasure about it to his superior during a lull in the work. Sohuma spread his hands. Believe me, Hakuya, it irritates me too. I know all too well the danger of this kind of nonsense being allowed to fester. I know it's even worse when it has something to do with the thrice darn triads, but we have to be realistic about it. When Ishida interrupted, Sumo raised his hand. We just can't do anything about it. We can't act like a sh character from that stupid Astro Boy show or a fantasy hero or born in another world or something. We're not paid to ask questions, still less if it's true what they say about being about the orders from being from the chief executive himself. Given that better dose of realism, Ishida shrugged. But then asked, obviously we can't go too hard on them or also be our hides, but surely we can at least try to enforce some standards at that. His scholarly thought briefly said, no, 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 let's stick to orders. Increases corruption, increases China's stuff here, huh? I suppose you're right, Don, so let's do something then. Make better use of resources elsewhere. Weakens Yoko Hideke's shaky foundation. It weakens their control. I like this one. I suppose you're honest, so let's do that then. Uh, appeal to Tokyo. Murray took care of Consul General Takashima's hand, and they proceeded to sit across from each other inside Takashima's office. Takashima was the first to breach the reason, beyond the reason, after formalities were exchanged. What brings you to my office outside the usual scheduled visits? The chief executive replied, It concerns Guangdong security, and the recent incidents that I'm sure you're aware of. Takashima nodded, and Murray Takeo continued, 
The recent incidents are harming the investor climate in the region. However, our security services believe that there may be a link we wish for you to look into. It's our opinion that interference in the investigation may be originating from Manchukuo. We would ask you to look into the potential evidence that may arise from studying the recent activity of Hitachi and Manchukuo. Takashimo saw for a moment as he mulled the appeal over and said, before eventually responding, It seems like it would like be in Tokyo's best interest to look into the matter. I'll contact some individuals. I know, to see if it can be done discreetly, I'll notify you if anything turn, of note turns up. Thank you, Consul General. So, hey, yes, overall, decreases the corruption, increases Japan's approval, and decreases their seats, which is great. But this video's gone long, long enough for now. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. Let's continue and try to improve our product with this testing group, and try to beat back Hitachi's influence. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.